Hey everyone, I'm really excited about sharing the following video with the Locksport community. If you enjoy it, please don't forget to subscribe. It really encourages me to make more content for you. Thank you, and please enjoy. The multi-lock family of high security locks uses an ingenious telescoping pin and pin design such that each key pin has an outer pin and an inner pin which interact with a key. The MT5 is different from other types of multi-locks as it adds an element of five unsprung sliders which interact with this groove in the key. These sliders are considered the most difficult element in picking the MT5. With this presentation, I wanted to describe and demonstrate a technique for visually picking the MT5 sliders using pulse tension as the initial step in picking this lock. I believe that visually aligning the sliders as the first step leads to a more consistent result. Let's begin by talking about the sidebar mechanism. Most locks work by restricting movement of their core by using some form of physical barrier to block rotation. A sidebar accomplishes this by sitting in the groove in the lock body. When the elements within the lock are out of alignment, the sidebar is unable to retract from the groove and it acts as a barrier for rotation. When the elements within the lock are properly aligned, the sidebar is able to then to retract from this groove into the lock core, which allows the core to rotate. The multi-lock MT5 has five sliders, which must be slid into the correct position so that a groove called the gate in each of the sliders aligns with the sidebar. This allows the sidebar to retract when the core is rotated. If the sliders are not in the correct position, the sidebar will not retract when the core is rotated as it will be blocked by the sliders. Let's expand on this idea with a visual aid. This first wooden block represents a slider, which moves back and forth the groove on the bottom of the slider is called the gate, and the pin or nub on the top is intended to interact with a key to move the slider into the correct position. The second wooden block represents the sidebar, which runs along the long axis of the lock. When the slider is in the correct position, the sidebar may retract into it and allow rotation of the core. When the slider is in the incorrect position, the sidebar will be blocked by the slider. Pulsing tension will allow the sidebar to repeatedly strike the sliders. By pulsing tension, you are repeatedly forcing the sidebar to hit the malpositioned slider, and this causes the slider to bounce within the lock. If you pulse tension when the slider is correctly positioned within the gate in line with the sidebar, it will not move. In this manner, you can see which sliders are set in the correct position. They are the ones that are not moving. The MT5 Plus has four different slider types, which multi-lock labels one through four. A better classification, which I have devised, would be naming them according to their correct set position within the lock when looking at them from the front of the lock. Before going any further, it is very important that you understand that for this demonstration, we are looking at the sliders from the back of the lock. Therefore, when we are in this view and I describe a far left pin, it will appear to be set to the far right. I'm going to label the right and the left side of the keyway to try and avoid confusion. First up is the far left slider. Next, the mid left slider. This is the mid right slider. And finally, the far right slider. Let's look at them all together. First, we push the far right slider all the way to the right, and it's set. Next, we nudge the mid right slider over, and that's set, followed by the mid left slider. And finally, the far left slider. We can now see them all in their relative position, and we're open. When a slider is close to its correct position, 
pulsing tension often allows it to jump into the correct position. This is called jumping into the gate. This concept becomes important when we talk about the far left slider. If you slide the far left slider all the way to the left, you will slightly overshoot its gate. In this example, three far left sliders are placed in the three rear positions and moved all the way to the far left. They have all slightly overshot their gate. However, with pulsing tension, all three sliders will jump into their true gate. The far right slider is the easiest to set, as the gate is in line with the sidebar when the slider is set in the furthest right position and does not require pulsing tension to open. The optimal place to position your pick is in the upper right hand corner of the keyway, just to the right of the warding. Let's reposition this core so that we can view it from the left side. We can see that there are five semicircular grooves which are in alignment with each slider. As you advance your pick along the right wall, slight continuous counterclockwise rotation of the pick will allow the pick to fall into the semicircular grooves. This will align your pick perfectly with the slider. Once aligned, clockwise rotation of the pick will engage the pin of the slider. All right, let's get to picking some real locks with our key pins removed. After the key is withdrawn from the lock, the sliders are positioned just shy of the far right position. A pick is used to set the sliders all the way to the far right. Pulsing tension reveals that all the sliders are bouncing, and therefore none of them are the far right slider type. Slider 2 is set in the mid right position. Slider 1 is set in the mid left position. Slider 3 is then set in the far left position, followed by number 4 in the mid left position, finally 5 in the mid right position, and we're open. The next example shows a lock with an easier slider bidding. After the key is withdrawn from the lock, the sliders are all set to the far right. There is a bit of warding on the bottom of the keyway which can sometimes get in the way of this initial setting, so it's a good idea to run your pick several times to ensure that they are all properly set. Pulsing tension reveals that sliders 3 and 4 are already set in the far right position. Sliders 1 and 2 are then set to the far left position. The pick is then advanced to slider 5 and it is set in the mid right position and we're open. In our third example, the key is inserted rotated and withdrawn. The sliders are then all set to the far right position. Pulsing tension reveals that all the sliders are bouncing and therefore none of them are set. Slider 1 is then set to the mid right position, as is slider 2. Slider 3 is set to the mid left, slider 4 to the far left, slider 5 to the mid left, and we're open. The MT5 is picked from the front in the same fashion as we have seen so far. Each slider is nudged over and tension is pulsed to check whether the pin is stationary and set, or bouncing and not set. Whenever more elements are added into a lock, both visual and tactile feedback will often be reduced. Therefore, there are some important differences when picking the MT5 with all the key pins present. Number one, bouncing of the sliders may be more subtle. Number two, the slider pins will be partially or completely obstructed by the key pins. This is not a big deal as you can usually see the body of the slider bouncing rather than the pin itself. Number three, the last two sliders don't always bounce when pulsed. They may have to be set in the standard method. And the last thing to take into account is that once all the sliders are believed to be in position, heavy tension should be maintained throughout the key pin picking process to minimize the risk of moving the set sliders. I believe that the visual method of picking the sliders first has a major advantage over picking the sliders when they bind. 
The sliders most often bind once the alpha spring and some of the key pins are set. Picking the slider at this stage requires the lock to be under continuous tension and requires a lot of fine tension control. Using too much tension as you pick a slider may cause it to overshoot the gate. It is very difficult to recover and reposition an overshot slider and often requires you to reset the whole lock. Using too little tension will result in dropping some of the key pins that you have already set. If you can pick some or all of the sliders beforehand, it will be easier to successfully pick open your lock. I really hope that you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you so much.